Joining me to discuss the fiscal cliff is Republican Congressman Doug Lamborn of Colorado. Hello, sir. Hello, Andrew. How are you doing? We were just going through the Titler cycle, uh, much like Frederick Bastiat and the law and other things like that. The, the knowledge of these things is, is pretty much relegated to the conservative movement. But how is it not true? If you look at our own American Revolution, what led to it, to where we are today, where more people are growing dependent on government, we are heading for fiscal collapse. Andrew, that's exactly right. We can't keep spending 40, borrowing 40 cents of every dollar that we spend. And like Paul Ryan pointed out during the campaign, we will meet a crisis that will be of a time and a place not of our own choosing. And the U.S. is too big to bail out. Who can bail out the U.S.? It can't be done. Why aren't we talking about Paul Ryan for Speaker of the House at this point? I mean, he was, the, he was on the ticket with Mitt Romney. He sounds like a pretty good representation of conservatism in the House. And the reason why I say that, I'm not trying to get you in trouble with the caucus, but John Boehner keeps talking about tax uh, spending cuts. The president, the Democrats, Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, keep talking about a mandate to spend more. So where does Boehner think we're going to come out ahead with the cuts? Well, the House controls the purse strings. We've, we've got that. However, we have to agree with the Senate on anything that goes to the president for a signature, including appropriations bills. And Andrew, I can predict right now, whatever happens in January, whatever happens in the lame duck session, Republicans in the House will get blamed for it. <laughs> I'm well, that telling we know. you right now. Well, that we know. But if we spent, let's just say, a little bit less on the military, right, but then made up that spending in entitlements, we didn't actually spend less. That's what I'm getting at. If the total spending increases, minor league cuts to particular programs doesn't mean spending cuts. It means we're spending more. So taxes have to go up to get that revenue. I, I just don't see how, well, Andrew, where the Republicans can win here with this one. No, and you're exactly right, Andrew. Every time taxes have been raised in the past, it's never gone to pay down the debt. Never. It's always been spent by the politicians in Washington, the big spenders, uh, the liberals in particular. So raising taxes, as the president wants to do, whether it's on a three-to-one ratio or whatever, whatever it is, uh, he, he'd love to just raise taxes, as a, as a matter of fact. What, dedicating that to deficit spending has never worked in the past. We have to talk about spending cuts. And unlike what people like Al Sharpton would like, we do have to look at two -third, the two-thirds of the budget, which is entitlements, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Let me ask you about your bill, the Budget Before Borrowing Act. Uh, kind of makes sense to me. Uh, we should actually know what the government needs to spend before we go out and spend it or borrow it or print it. Well, it's a bill that I know could pass the House. Uh, it's aimed at the Senate, to be real honest, Andrew, and I know they'll never pass it, unfortunately. The reason, though, and it's to highlight how they have not had a budget for more than three years. More than three years, they have not even voted on a budget or passed a budget. So uh, we're dealing with almost a $3.7 trillion enterprise with no budget. So how can we borrow money, increase the debt ceiling to our nation when we're not even dealing with budgets? That's insane. Well, and the bill is to call attention to that. I was just going to jump in and say that Timothy Geithner said on Bloomberg Television that we shouldn't even have a debt limit. Okay, for, forgetting how crazy that sounds on the surface, what if we can't borrow any more money? What if the, the Chinese won't lend us any more money, the Europeans can't lend us any more money, the third world doesn't have any money to lend in the first place? So even if we got rid of the debt ceiling, what if there's nobody to lend us any more money? Well, Andrew, and we can't ever get rid of the debt ceiling. Uh, but... China even is going to run out of money. China won't be able to bail out the U.S. And like you're saying, the, the others can't, uh, can't if they wanted to. So we have to look at spending. The, the Harry Reid, Chuck Schumer, those folks in the Senate are not talking about spending cuts at all. The president is not talking about that at all. We're trying to get him, force him to the table to negotiate and come up with serious spending cuts. And not, by the way, Andrew, on defense only. Barack Obama has been hammering defense for four years. I think it's time to look at other parts of the country other than the first mandate of our government, which is to 
protect our country's defense. Let's look at other things in the budget, like the two-thirds, which is entitlements, and get spending cuts on the table. 